Welcome to Overcome America Hair Loss Summit. My name is Valerie Fuentes. I'm your host, and today I am with Harry Wood. He's a leading stylist and coach for Aveda and Sea Lauder in North America. His passion and philanthropic efforts in the beauty industry have helped thousands of people to better their careers and lifestyles. As far as back to you, his mission is to elevate cosmetology license by training and certifying stylists to provide alternative hair solutions for people suffering from medically related hair loss. And I'm just so excited to have you here today, Harry, because I know you are absolutely making a difference in my community. And I wanna learn more about you and what Back to You is doing. So welcome to the show. Thanks, Valerie. It's a pleasure to be here with you. And you know, when I first got your email and I saw what you were doing, it, with medical hair loss and spreading the good word in the community. I was honored to be a part of it. Thank you. So tell us about this amazing cause. Um, how did you start it with Back to You? Well, backtoyou.org was uh, started about two years ago out of a need uh, for people that were suffering from medical hair loss. Uh, I've had been doing wigs and toppers and extensions for about 15 years. And, you know, it, there's a lot of information, even for a licensed professional to take in. And I've watched for years and years, consumers or our customers or the doctor's patients come into the salon looking for solutions, not to be able to find one that absolutely was done well um mm -hmm. you know that when someone loses their hair they typically go to a wig shop or a hospital for the solution and i'll tell you a story about a client of mine who got diagnosed with cancer and went to a wig shop in a hospital and you know, she paid really good money for a wig. She paid $4,000 for this wig. And she came into the salon and it didn't look anything like her. And she said, but they told me that if anybody else touched it, they wouldn't honor it. And so I went to this particular shop and I said, I'd like to speak with the person who cut my client's hair. And they said, they're not here today. I said, well, okay, um, can you just show me where you do the hair? I'm fascinated that you do hair in a hospital. They said, no, unfortunately, that is a private area. I said, well, can I apply for a job? And they said, no, we're not hiring right now. And so, you know, um, all of my senses said that we should be doing this in the salons and not in wig shops and hospitals. So my journey with medical hair loss started about, 14 years ago. And, you know, when you get coworkers or family members or, you know, your clients that come into the salon or they call you and tell you what they're going through, it's not an easy conversation to have. And it's our moral responsibility to be able to provide that for them. You know, the conversation you and I had a little while ago is that, a licensed professional should be working with other licensed professionals. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that you, as a stylist, you have a professional license mm -hmm. and you should honor that license by bridging the gap between beauty and medicine. And you should be working with us so that you can have relationships in your communities with oncology clinics and fusion centers and surgery centers and dermatologists, and OBGYN. All of these people need somewhere to send their guests. Mm -hmm. They should be sending them to the stylists that have been trained mm -hmm. with our certification. Mm -hmm. And, you know, by taking our course, you know, we invite you to be part of a team of CAP certified stylists mm -hmm. that's recognized by people in the medical profession as a certified alternative hair provider. CAP certification is something that sets apart a regular stylist 
uh, somebody who's a licensed professional, it's like getting another initial by yeah. your name. And we want to make sure that the people in the medical community know how serious that we are about doing it. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that we pride ourselves on when we get a referral from a doctor's office or you know one of the people that i just mentioned is that we reach out to them right away when people are looking for a solution online and they reach out to one of our stylists one of the things that separates us from everyone else is that we pride ourselves on a very responsive um recallback Mm -hmm. so that we can get them taken care of it's important right. that somebody who knows how to cut and color alternative hair provides this service for them so that they don't have to go to a wig shop where somebody who might be 18 19 years old having a summer job is running the wig shop yeah. not that there's something wrong there's a need for all of it but the people with medical hair loss, the people that we take care of, should be taken care of by licensed professionals. Right. And you mentioned a really good point that I think the majority of us have experienced, and it's that you go to the doctor's office and you get a diagnosis and then you leave. And it ends there. There is no resources or this is your next step, go see this person. It's very much, you know, you have alopecia. Bye. Here you go. <laughs> Figure go, it out. go find your way in, in the yeah. black hole internet of wigs. You yeah. Know? When I and first so started really studying it, it's so your... crazy. You can go down a black hole for hours and leave more confused than you ever did before. Because there are so many options. And so it's not only, it, it's, and I also think that, that finding the right person, that it's going to make you feel comfortable, is so important. And that person, like you mentioned, has to have the education. So I want to talk a little bit about that. What do you, when you say that they're certified trainers, when they're cap, when they're cap stylist, what are, what have they been trained on? Why so we train the stylists on how to have a medical grade consultation and how to uh, measure and fit them as well as match their color. And then also to determine the type of cap construction based on their lifestyle as well as the fiber that's needed to reflect that lifestyle as well. Okay. And what kind of work do you do? So like if I were to come see you, mm -hmm. what's the process like? So I'll tell you how, what the process looks like out in the regular world. And this is what we wanted to change about it is that when you shop at a hospital or a wig shop, sometimes it's three to five days before you can even get an appointment with a fitter. And it's another three to five days before you can actually get the product in. And if it's right, you can take it home then that's a week uh if they have to modify and make uh, changes to the color or cut it might be another couple days so now you're looking at a seven to ten day process i said we pride ourselves on response time and being great providers we can get a call from a customer on one day and actually have them in that day and have them everything they need by 10 a.m. the next morning. Wow. And so, it is so true because you, um, for us, it's pressing, right? It's of not, course. It's not, it's not cosmetic. It's a necessity. So it I, is. I really see that and I appreciate that, that you are providing that service, that urgency, right? Hey, listen, I'm 48 years old. I know what it's like to be losing your hair. I mean, if there, there's a sense of urgency, I want to help somebody out. <laughs> Absolutely. And so what would you say, so for people that have not, don't have a stylist yet and want to go look for someone, what should they look for? When I go find a stylist, what kind of questions should I ask? Um, yeah. Please well, guide me. that's a great question. Uh, first of all, not just any stylist can answer the questions, but you can find a stylist at backtoyou.org. We have a, a button on the website that says find a stylist. Mm -hmm. 
Um, currently, we're in 23 states, and you know we're over 200 strong with stylists, and we're growing daily. And we, uh, if you want to find out what you need to do, you would want to go to one of those stylists. And you know the way it works is the consumer registers on the site by clicking on find a stylist and then choosing to connect now. Um, our stylist profiles were all written uh, individually about why they're involved in medical hair loss. Mm -hmm. Some people are breast cancer survivors. Some people have had family that were, you know, uh, had t some form of cancer and lost their hair. Some people just genuinely care about other people and want to be involved. Our stylists aren't typically the newer stylists. Our stylists that we work with are typically more seasoned and have had experience in this realm. Most of the people we have more than five years experience, and then you know a lot of them are 10 plus years experience. So they've had encounters where someone came to them and said that they needed their help and they weren't able to provide a solution. So they felt the necessity to be a part of our team. Much like, you know, if we do a training anywhere in the world, whenever we go, you can ask the question to a room full of stylists, how many people have ever had a client sit down in their chair and tell them that they were going to lose their hair? And 99% of the room raises their hands. I said, well, how many of you were actually able to provide a solution for them? And only about 15% of the room can raise their hand. So our conclusion is that after they work with us for an entire day, that they will feel good about working with people and feel good about knowing that they have a support team with back to you to be able to assist them with any questions that they have so that they can get started today taking care of people with medical hair loss. Yeah. Yeah, and that's so important. Um, I think from my personal experience, when I was first starting to lose my hair, it was, on my end, it was terrifying to go to the salon. Sure. Because I didn't even want to face my stylist because I didn't know what to say. I was, sure. I was afraid to have that conversation. So I think... Um, the technical piece where, you know, they have the proper education to help us with, um, you know, like, like knowing what they're doing, period, right? It's important, but I think also uh, how to connect with a person that is going through medical hair loss is important because you can't just, I feel like you have to be a little bit extra careful of knowing what to say, what not to say, how to support sure. us. Uh, in a different way, because it's not, I, I feel like it's not only about doing, it's more about connecting and creating that That's right. We, and we, will, we highly encourage our team to emotionally connect with the person, empathize with what they're going through, put themselves in their shoes, and treat them as if they were their family. And, and you know, we do that well in the in the salons. We've just not been taught to do it well with people going with medical hair loss typically somebody would go out and buy a piece and bring it into the salon of course the stylist at that point is like okay i can cut that but they leave it up to the consumer to go get what they need and what we're trying to do is to be the provider for the stylist to help them take care of the customers i love that yeah. So with that, is there any, any message that you want to share with our audience who hasn't felt, is not ready yet to get hair, new hair, but is thinking about it? So well, to, your, to your customers, the ones that have alopecia, what I would say is that, you know, you should reach out, try to find a stylist at backtoyou.org that you can talk to and just start a conversation to get to know us and know that we have your best interests at heart and want to help you with all the solutions, both losing hair and growing hair back. We want to be the person that takes care of those needs for you. So what I would say to the stylists who have been exposed to this and never had a solution, 
I would say that you should go to backtoyou.org and register as a stylist so that we can reach out to you when we're doing a training in your area. Because if you've ever encountered this and not had the knowledge on how to do it, we want to get you to join our team so that you can take care of your people and not have to send them out of the salon when they need you the most. Right. And so Harry I really wanted to thank you for what you're doing and for leading this movement because I, so my focus when I started losing my hair was to focus on my personal development, my personal growth. Cause I knew uh, I was able to distinguish that I'm not my body and I'm not my hair. But I also know that the moment I started wearing hair, my life changed, right? Yeah. Like I, I'm confident, I get to go out, I get to do all the things, and I'm not thinking about my hair loss. So I think it's really a holistic approach to hair loss that is needed, not only focusing on the personal development, but you can also, you know, look good and feel good. So That's right. love what you're doing, and thank you. thank you, thank you so much for leading this movement. Thank you. And it's funny that you say movement because our team, you know, came up with the, the term hashtag B2Y movement because we don't believe that we're actually teaching classes in the community, but that we're creating a movement of hairdressers that slowly but surely we're all joining hands across the country so that we can take back this piece of business that deserves to be in salons and deserves to be done by licensed professionals you know our team is proud uh, of what they're doing and if anybody is curious about the type of work that we're doing you can go to the testimonials on the website at backtoyou.org and take a look we love everything about what we're doing and the people that we're serving are incredibly gracious and thankful and it's just nice to be able to hold somebody's hand and say I've got you. It's going to be all right. Yes. And we need that so bad because at the beginning or, you know, at any step of your hair loss journey, we really need that support, that extra support. Right. I think that all of, well, my stylist right now, it's one of my best friends. And I think when we're losing our hair, we become so sensitive to everything and, and to have that person that you can count on, that it's going to make you feel comfortable that is going to make you look beautiful, that is going to, you know, be with you every step of the way from choosing your, your piece all the way until you walk out feeling fabulous. I think, Absolutely. I think. So thank you so we much. We love that. We love that. I, uh, you know, I, I love that whole story. You know, I, you said your, your relationship with your stylist. I, I have a young girl named Faith who's 16 years old, who has lost her hair and, to this day, I'm the only person who's seen her without hair because she she won't even let her her mom or her best friend see it. But when she and I get together, you know, it's, it's funny that her name is Faith because she actually gives me faith every day. Yeah, that is so true. And I know you mentioned that I I think that up on, well, it was up until last year that I decided I went out with without wearing hair for almost four days. Um, but up until that weekend, only maybe my mom, I don't even know if my mom has, but my doctor, my stylist, and that's it. Nobody else had seen me, you know, in many years without hair. So it is pretty special. And I think, it, you know, you get to experience us authentically. So right. I think I, I think that's where the where the connection comes from. Because you get to experience all of us in our raw, authentic selves. So and and you know what? It's it's awesome that uh, you know we're all coming together and creating this movement, you know, to be able to take this section of business and put it back into salons and you know, I, I know you look beautiful and, you know, your stylist is doing a great job with you. And, you know, if she wants to join our team, have her give me a call. <laughs> I will let her know for sure. Good well, thank you, have. Harry. I hope we get to collaborate in the future. I love what you're doing and, you know, we'll continue to support this cause. I think it's amazing.
Thank you, Valerie. Thank you so much. And I appreciate being a part of it. And if you want any more people, we have a ton of people on our team that would love to share their story with you as well. Awesome. All right. We'll see you on the next interview. Thank you, Valerie. Have a great day. Bye.